Create, Share, Inspire podcast. This is episode 759. I'm Kristen Amdahl and we're here live in Southwest Florida in my studio. If you're joining me live, please say hello. If you are new to the podcast, welcome. I uh, usually go live for 30 minutes, Monday through Friday, and we talk about crafting and pretty much everything revolving around the lifestyle of being a crafter. So if this is something that interests you, we'd love to have you come more often. Please feel welcome to subscribe. The red subscribe button's in the corner. And if you're so inclined, there's a bell button right next to it. And if you click that bell button, it'll always notify you when I'm going live or when I upload a new video. I also do lots and lots of tutorial videos here on my YouTube channel and some Zen videos and lots of other fun things. So welcome everybody, happy new year, happy Monday. Good morning, Grace and Trisha, Judy, Lisa, Thea, Joe, Geraldine, Lorraine, Carrie. Good morning everybody and welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast or daily vlog, whatever you want to call it. Hi Angela and Diane, Lucy. Ah, Pamela was just looking at this book this morning. I pulled it out because I'm wearing one of the cowls from the book this morning. This is the Linda Mobius cowl. Hi Donna and Donna and Pamela, Lily, Rita. Good morning everybody. Happy Monday and welcome back to the podcast. Hope everybody had a happy new year. Thank you, Judy, for posting the link. Judy's posting a link to the pattern. You can download the pattern for any of the patterns from my books, actually, individually, or you can order them in the book. So this pattern, the Linda Mobius Cowl, is available as a PDF download all by itself for $1.99, or you can uh, purchase the paperback book on Amazon Prime all over the world, or if you order it directly from me, it can be personalized and autographed. You can also get it as a digital ebook on my website as well. And what else was I gonna say about that? Oh, and there is a tutorial video for it. And I did even look it up this morning so that I could share it with you quickly. And uh, there is the link to the tutorial video that is supplemental and it is meant to help you to help guide you through making the pattern. It's a very cool technique actually. I've done it a couple times before and that's when we start with foundation ovals in the center here and as you make a ring of foundation ovals then work in the round above on the top of them and as you come around then dip down below and work the bottom uh, the opposite side of the foundation ovals, you end up creating a figure eight, which is the construction for a Mobius. So as you're doing that, you end up growing the Mobius from the top and the bottom at the same time and get this great twist in it. And you might say, well, what's so great about a twist? What's wrong with just a tube? Well, there's nothing wrong with just a tube. And you could certainly modify this pattern to be just a tube cowl as well. But what I like about a Mobius cowl sometimes is the fact that that twists allows the piece to lay perfectly flat in front of you, which helps feature some of the stitch pattern as well. This has a relatively simple stitch pattern. It is just like a two double crochet, chain two or chain three, two double crochet shell. I don't remember exactly. But what I, what I focused on in this one was doing that in stripes. So you know how I talk about sometimes I like just one thing to be the thing that you need to focus on and everything else should be simple. So I did a simple stitch pattern so that you could learn the Mobius um, technique and work in two colors. And from there, you could absolutely apply any stitch pattern to this technique then as well. Let's see, good morning, uh, Lucy, Carla, Sharon, Pat, Terry, Angela, Jody. Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday, and welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast, episode 759, and first episode of year 2021. Hi, Holy, Hummer, and Becky. Good morning. I know I've probably missed some names, but that's what happens when I start talking. Lots to talk about. So this is done in Be So Fine yarn as well, and I did use two colors, 
but I did limit the use of each color to a Be So Fine tidbit. You could either order whole balls of Be So Fine yarn and then have enough. You could make it in one color with one ball of Be So Fine yarn. You could make it in two colors of Be So Fine tidbits like I did. You could use uh, you could use leftover yarn you could to make lots and lots of colors or you could do two full balls of Be So Fine yarn for two colors and then have enough yarn to make a couple of cowls. Does that make sense? <laughs> Lots of options. Hi Constance. Hi Donna. Yes, happy 2021. I hope it's better too for you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Hi Edna. Good morning. Hi Constance. I forget where you're from, Holy Hummer. You must be out west if you had to get up early to join us for 9 a.m. Florida time. It's getting cold here again today. We're going to have a high of, I don't know, somewhere in the 60s, and we're going to have a low in the 40s tonight. So I've been a busy bee while we've been off for four days for the long weekend. Donna loves Be So Baby Yarn. That's wonderful. Uh, California. Yes, of course. It's 6 a.m. for you. Yes. Yes. Happy New Year, everybody. Judy has four more inches of fresh snow. You still had lots of snow from your last snowfall, too. Yikes. Well, we still haven't turned the heat on here yet, so we'll see how long I can last. Thanks, Carla. I love this cowl, too, and I'm wearing it with... Um, a new to me shirt that I found on eBay recently, which you're gonna, maybe you'll find this funny like I do and maybe you won't. Um, <laughs> and that brings me to what I was going to talk about. I have been a busy bee over the uh, long weekend for uh, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day and the weekend following it. I create, I did the entire photo shoot, like the fashion side, I don't know if it's fashion, but the, the modeling photo shoot, that doesn't sound right either, for the new book, 24 Crochet Hats. So I told you I had already done the overhead shots, the real simple overhead shots with details of the construction of the projects on white background. I had already done that photo shoot, but what I wanted to do was go outside and put the hats on me and my baby dolls and take photos of them on a head. So I did that photo shoot this weekend and it just so happens that this is a you know how I you know what a weakness I have for sheer blouses. I found this sheer uh Lucky Brand blouse used on eBay a couple weeks ago and it arrived the day I was going to do the photo shoot and so I wore it in some of the photos and it turns out I'm actually wearing it in the shot that I chose for the cover of the book and created the cover art for the book. So not only do I have all the photography done for the book now, I have the cover art, front and back cover spread completely done. And um, and we're back in tech editing again. So we're on round two of tech editing, or no, round three. Then we've got round four, round four. We've got like three more rounds to go, but we're definitely in the home stretch here. And I'm very excited about that. Uh, so I can't show you the cover quite yet, but I will show it to you soon. And anyway, I'm wearing this blouse and the cover art for the book. So I think that's exciting. Any, that's why I wanted to wear it again today. Uh, it's new to me, right? So it's still a new blouse. And I do like how the lighter gray in this burgundy and purple print really picks up on the periwinkle and stormy sea colors. Or, it's not periwinkle. Well, it is a periwinkle purple, but the colors that I used in this cowl are Be So Fine Yarn in colors Lilac Memories and Stormy Sea. And you can find both of those as tidbits in my shop on my website. Uh, yeah, Lucky Brand is a comp is a national company, uh, national clothing company. We used to have a shop here in um, Southwest Florida, but it closed several years ago. And um, I just, I still look for blouses and stuff on uh, on eBay. I look for the used ones. Yeah. Um, Edna, only we have to wait for the tutorials for the hats once all is in place. I'm not quite sure what you're asking about, but um, the book for the tw the 24 crochet 
hat book is not finished yet, but it is getting closer to being finished. And I will be releasing the book as a paperback and as a digital ebook, and I will be releasing the patterns individually. Each pattern, except for one, has a large size range. One of them, I just, I didn't feel like I was going to do it justice by sizing it. So there is one hat that's not sized, but then 23 hats that come in multiple sizes. So you can make any of the hats for anyone from a baby. It's really exciting. I love seeing an ex inclusive size range on all of them. Uh, Ever made a hat in fingering weight yarn? Yes, I have, Holy, and there are hats in fingering weight yarn in the book, too. Oh, so you're asking uh, for, yeah, there'll be supplemental tutorial videos for the techniques in the book as well. That's true. Karen Z, what exactly is tech editing? Well, think about, okay, so first of all, tech editing involves proofreading making sure that all, so there's editing and tech editing. So we're doing the final editing last, but we kind of do some proofreading editing as we go along too. But tech editing is where you're checking the technical accuracy of what's written in the technical instructions. So for example, if you're familiar with knit and crochet patterns, you know they're not written in actual English or actual language of whichever language they're written in, they're written in a technical code uh, for knitting and crochet. So let's, for example, let's read row one of this, what, or the Stella shawl. Row one says CH4 comma DC in fourth CH from hook, REP from asterisk 63 more times, and that means that you have 64 foundation ovals. Now, if you don't know how to read crochet, that may as well be another language, right? It's a technical language for crochet, and this applies to both knitting and crochet. So it is a technical language. So in tech editing, we are going over the technical accuracy of those instructions, and because I include charts with all of my patterns, and that will be the case in 24 Crochet Hats book as well. There are charts throughout. In fact, most of the hats have multiple charts, a chart for the crown, a chart for the walls, and a chart for the brim. So lots and lots of different ways to supplement your learning style. It's going to be really wonderful. But so technical editing will not only check the Okay, it will do proofreading on the technical aspect of the written instructions. It will also cross-reference if the chart and the written instructions match. And then on top of that, there is proofreading that comes along with it as well, because uh, you can make typos in the written word and you can make typos in the technical instructions as well. And the, the typos could either be the, the typos could either be proofreading, like instead of CH4, it could be CI4, right? Which isn't technically incorrect. It's a typo um, mistake. Or it could say chain three or chain five instead of chain four. So oh, there's lots of ways that we have to make sure everything is correct. So it takes several rounds. We did the first round already. Uh, we're working on the second, we, and, and we did the second round. We're working on the third round now. Um, then there'll be a fourth round, then probably three more rounds after that. There's probably around seven rounds of editing that go into play uh, before we even, and then I'll order a print copy for a proof of the book. And that's when I will be checking the, um, the print quality and making sure that the book layout is done and the photos were uploaded to the file in the correct um, resolution so that they print properly. Same with the charts. So uh, yeah, there's still quite a bit of work to do. It's not as much work as it sounds. The bulk of the work's been done. Like writing a book is an incredible incredible amount of work to begin with. And so when I say there's not much left to do, I'm not saying that there's not a lot of work left to do. I'm saying the um, it's small compared to the amount of work that's already been done. I guess that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, it, there's a lot of work involved in writing a book. No question. No question. Uh, 
And oh, and the new book will also be written in 14 point font, just like all of my other books will be super, super easy to read as well. I love all the questions though, guys. It's wonderful. I'm so glad that you asked such great questions because honestly, time one person has a question, chances are there are lots of other people that have the same question and maybe they're um, not comfortable asking, right? We're human beings. We're more alike than we are different. And more times than not, if someone has a question, other people have the same question. So thank you for feeling brave and asking your questions because you're not just... I can't, I'm not just helping you and giving you your answer, but we're also helping everybody else to understand as well. So you're going to probably think I'm nuts telling you what I'm about to tell you, but I ordered two more five packs of my reading glasses this weekend and they just arrived. And I know I've told you that I've already ordered three five packs of them in the past. <laughs> I know. I have 15 reading pa pairs of reading glasses around the house. I can never seem to find a pair, and so I ordered two more packs. Um, I absolutely love them, though, and I, uh, yes, I've lost and broken the others, Grace. That's the problem. I'm very rough on my things. I'm always rough on my nails. I'm always rough on my glasses, and maybe they're not the best quality either. Let's... I, Maybe it's not just me. It's probably me. Anyway, I thought you might like to see all five of the styles. I can try them all on. So this is how they come in this box. And I'm wearing the clear acrylic frames. They do break easily. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's not just me. All right. Uh, so it comes in a box with five pairs of glasses and a little cleaning cloth, which I think is fantastic, especially for those of us who... Um, take our glasses on and off all the time. I don't need glasses all the time, so I'm constantly taking them on and off. In fact, that reminds me, I think one of the reasons why my glasses get loose and break is because I put them on my head and I don't, and I think I stretch them out when I do that. And when I stretch them out doing that, then when I go to put them back on and look down, they fall on the floor and that's when they break. <laughs> anyway, I gotta get better at this. And in the meantime, I wanted to show you the five different styles that come in this set. I've also bought the five pack of tortoise shell ones. You can also get a five pack of just plain black. I buy the 2.0 strength, but that doesn't matter for you. You buy whichever strength works for you. But I wanted to show you all five prints and then uh, I'll try them all on so you can see. So this is the clear acrylic set. I happen to love these um, for some outfits because you don't see the glasses at all, and I think that's kind of fun and different. These are the blue frames, which, because I have blue eyes, I think that these are kind of fun, too. But maybe even if you don't have blue eyes, these would be fun. I just love the color. It's like a turquoise blue. See that? Okay. I didn't come close with the clear. So there's the clear. <laughs> all right. So then there's a pair that have black frames in the front and then tortoise shell on the side, and it's a darker tortoise shell than the next pair I'm going to show you. So it's black in the front and tortoise shell on the side. They kind of make you look smart, right? <laughs> and then there's a solid black frame, which definitely makes you look smart. I think these, I like these sometimes. So these are the solid black, black on the side, black in the front. And then I don't think I mentioned, but the blue is blue on the side and the front. And it's a clear acrylic blue. It's so pretty. And the clear, clear ones are clear on, the, and it matches all the way around. And then my favorite pair, and it, this is going to sound so picky and technical, but I love this tortoise shell way more than these. <laughs> Look at the color difference in these. This is called an ivory tortoise shell. And honestly, if I could buy sunglasses and any other type of accessory in this, I would. I am so in love with this um, ivory tortoise shell. And if you think you're going to get either one of these in the five pack of tortoise shell, you're wrong. The five pack of tortoise shell glasses is somewhere in between this print and this print, which I thought was very interesting as well. But they're cute. They're just not as cute as these, and they're cuter than these. <laughs> Although if you like these, that's fine too. But how cute are these on? I love the ivory tortoise shell. Oh, these are also, there's something else that these glasses do that's good for screens. It has that blue light. What's it called? Do you guys know? Somebody can help me out with what... um. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, Pamela has sparkly glasses. That's nice. 
Yeah, Holy Hummer, that is a great idea um, to have a pocket on things, but blue light filter. Yes, they have a blue light filter too, so they're supposed to be very helpful when you're looking at screens a lot, which I happen to do, and I, a blue light blocker, anti, and anti they are anti-glare as well. So if that's something that appeals to you, I really love them, and for the price, they, I mean, I think they're like $12 for five pair. It's an incredibly great price. It allows me to keep a couple pairs in my purse, a couple pairs in the glove compartment in my car. It allows me to keep some at my nightstand in my bedroom, some in my bathroom, some in the kitchen, some in the living room, and some in both of my offices. I have two offices. I have the video studio here where I do the videos, and then I have the shipping room uh, next door in the next bedroom. So I, and, and because I'm constantly taking my glasses on and off, it's really lovely to be able to have them everywhere. Um, and I do put them in my pocket sometimes, but like I said, I put them on my head like sunglasses way too often. It's a terrible habit, and I have a large head, so when I do that, I stretch them out, and when I stretch them out and then put them back on, they fall. Uh, so don't stretch your glasses out. How are the cats, Donna wants to know. They are lovely. Uh, they're so sweet and so happy. These eyeglasses are in my Amazon shop. I do not have them in my shop. Judy's posting a link to nail files in my shop. I do have some lovely nail files, which are great to have all over the house too. I keep these in my purse and in all of my uh, different workspaces and in my car. But also really important is to keep nail files anywhere you're crafting because anytime you get a snag on one of your nails, and this applies to whether you have natural nails or um artificial nails. You don't want to snag your yarn and you certainly don't want to snag the fabric that you make with your yarn. So having nail files all over is a great idea too. And I do sell these in a bundle. Uh, yes, Judy's posting a link to the glasses right now. So you could, you'll see there that you can get all five of them in black, all five of them in tortoise shell, or you can get the assorted pack like I just showed you, which comes in clear, light blue, um, a black and tortoise shell combo, all black, and then that beautiful ivory tortoise shell. Okay. Hi, Sharon, good morning. There was something else I was gonna show you up here today too. Hmm. Oh, I know what else I was going to tell you. I shared a couple more things that I added to my Amazon shop this weekend. Number one, I have decided that magnetic eye, magnetic liner eyelashes are not for me. Um, it's not so much that it's difficult to put them on and it's not so much that they don't look great on. It's that I've had um, eye irritation in taking off the magnetic liner. There's something about even using an oil-based um, makeup remover or face cleanser, I'm having a really hard time with eye irritation and almost having reaction to taking the, the magnetic liner off. So I don't think it agreed with me. So having said that, I really am enjoying wearing uh, false lashes. It really is a trend right now and I love wearing them. So what I've done is done a little bit of research to figure out what's best for hypoallergenic um, products to put on your eyes. And so I found a product by KISS K-I-S-S, -S, and you can find it in my Amazon shop, that is a hypoallergenic um, lash glue that has no formaldehyde or latex in it, which apparently are some of the things that make other adhesives and other glue and other liners irritable to your eyes. And so I found, and then from there, I went with that brand's eyelashes, and I found them to be incredibly easy to put on. I'm wearing them today. I did not pick, I mean, I just went with the first one they suggested, so these are rather large, but they probably a medium size. They're not super glam, but definitely on the glam side. And you can get smaller ones too, because I did suggest them to my girlfriend and she ordered them and we compared them side by side and hers are a little more natural than mine. And both are gorgeous though, I love them both. Anyway, you can find both the hypoallergenic lash adhesive in the uh, in my Amazon shop, and you can find the five pack of pairs of lashes that I ordered too. Um, 
That's a great idea, Holy, except it could probably tangle your yarn. And I know that um, I'd have to think about that. Putting something inside the ball of yarn could actually cause tangles. So we'll have to think about that. But it's a great idea otherwise. Thank you, Sharon. Pamela loves my nail files. Thank you. I do too. They're so beautiful. They're beautiful and so functional. And it has two different sizes. So there's a uh, there's a rougher grit on one side and a smoother grit on the other. But they are definitely made for natural nails. So if you're worried about them being too rough, they aren't. They are meant specifically for natural nails. Thank you, Lucy. So, um... One of the things that I did this morning was did a, I did a run through of doing a makeup tutorial in my uh, at my vanity table this morning. I hope to start doing that this week. I'm planning on doing maybe one makeup hair tutorial live once a week. Bye, sweetheart. Have a great day. I love you. Did you take anything with you? Uh, Food, no. snacks, drinks. No. Fill a jug of water. I'm only working for like two and a half hours right now, so I'll be working. Then come back and we'll feed you, and then you go back. Okay. Yeah. Right, love, you. love you too. Bye-bye. What was I talking about? I got distracted by this super handsome sweetheart that walked by. <laughs> oh, I was I did my first run through of uh, doing a makeup hair tutorial this morning. And just like with anything else new, I'm nervous, I'm scared, I'm afraid that people will laugh or make fun of me for doing it, but I know other people are interested, so I'm definitely going to try to go outside my comfort zone and try it. Honestly, once I do, I'll be, I'll be fine, right? Just like I was afraid to go live for the first time for the podcast too. Gosh, I wanna say it took me six months to actually push the button. <laughs> But that's the case with everybody. Everybody gets scared before they try something new. So anyway, I did my run through this morning and as I was doing it, I was trying to figure out, I even had my camera set up with like ready to video without pushing record because I wanted to see what showed up in camera. So realizing I have to lift up the product more and show what I'm doing more. It's not just me doing my hair and makeup, it's doing it in a way so that other people can see what I'm doing. So a little bit um, little bit of a learning curve there, but I will get it. Anyway, I did the lashes this morning while keeping in mind and being mindful of how to present it on camera. And it went so quickly and so easily. Um, uh, cutting hair, Holly wants to know. Yeah, we could definitely add that too. I've been cutting my own hair for, oh, I don't know, almost a year now. Been deciding whether or not I'm going to cut bangs again. I can't decide if I want to grow them out or uh, I can't decide if I want to grow them out or put bangs back again. Can't decide. I definitely need a trim back here though. My back, the back's getting thin. My hair is fine to begin with, so it gets super fine uh, at the ends if I when I need a trim. Yeah. So my goal for this year will be to. Um, add some add some extra live streams to the YouTube channel for beauty and hair stuff and add uh, more of the Zen type videos, whether we focus on ASMR or just nature in general. Um, I know that that's the buzzword now, ASMR, but we've been doing it as Zen videos for a long time. Thank you, Sharon. Oh, that's a big deal. You're, if you're a cosmetology instructor and you uh, and you give me an A+, plus, that means a lot to me. Thank you. I know I'm not professional, but um, my goal is to help people that also aren't professional. And the fact that I've had to learn how to change my beauty reg regime as my skin is aging makes me feel like I've learned a lot for my specific point of view that I want to share. What I did in my 20s and 30s does not apply in my late 40s now. So I'm really excited to share that aging mature skin point of view when talking about beauty, hair and makeup for that matter and uh, skin care. That's interesting to me. Hi, Jalea. Ja I don't know if I said your name right, ja Jalea. But good morning and welcome. Hi, Shelly. Good morning. Does anybody have any questions? I joined TikTok too this weekend. It's been a busy weekend. I joined TikTok 
and um, I started doing my um, ASMR and Zen videos there. So I've heard that people like that over there, and I thought it might be fun to explore a new uh a new avenue for sharing Zen videos. So I started doing them there and then I've been sharing them on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube as well. Yeah, Sharon, you're 73. There's been a lot of changes, I agree. Carla's working on the Mary Jane show. Wonderful, that is really a fun project. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Ah, which reminds me, another thing that it's been a long weekend, so of course I did a lot of stuff. I've also decided one of my New Year's resolutions was to be more mindful of self-care and really carve out a little more time in my day, week, month, what have you for self-care. So I've promised myself to carve out time to do yoga and meditate and to start reading again. I haven't read anything that wasn't educational in probably 10 years. I stopped reading novels and fiction 10 years ago, and which is fine. I still read and I love learning and I'm not going to stop learning either, but I decided that taking a few minutes every day to spend um, some time reading something that is just self-care. It's not educational. It's not to grow the business. It's just to sit down and slow down. So I've started reading some books and I thought that you might be um, interested. So I have a folder on my Amazon shop where you can find the books that I've been reading. So not only do I have my books on there, but I've been sharing some of the other books that I've been reading as well including right now I'm reading a book called Angelology, but I've read a few James Patterson books recently, and there's uh, a book that I read recently that was amazing, and I hope um, it becomes a movie. It was called The Last Flight? Oh, gosh, I think it was called The Last Flight. It was a New York Times bestseller. It was amazing. Uh, is yoga good for back pain? Absolutely. And you may be a, a familiar with the fact that I've had major, uh, severe foot pain for several months now. And even though I was so busy over the last four days, I also could barely walk for the last four days. I almost needed a cane at one point over the weekend because my foot hurt so bad and just couldn't move. And so that's when I said, need to focus more on yoga. And I took some magnesium too. And the magnesium, the last flight, thank you, Judy. That book was amazing. J absolutely amazing. Um, so anyway, I've been working on my yoga, taking magnesium. And last night after four days of my, I think it's plantar fasciitis that I have in my heel, after four days of doing yoga every single day, and I was doing it like on and off for maybe a week before that, I can do a downward dog where my heels almost touch the floor, which if you're familiar with yoga and you're a newbie, you know how hard it is to do downward dog or down facing, yeah, downward dog. And you know how hard it is to get your heels to go flat. It's where your whole body does an upside down V. And I feel like I'm seeing progress and I know that my foot's gonna get better now. So I'm very excited about that. And I have found there is an app on my phone that I use for minimal yoga stuff. And then when I like, I want to do a quick routine. And then when I have time to do a bigger one, there's some amazing people here on YouTube, uh, starting with Yoga with Adrian. I love her very much. And then there was a second one I found this week, and I'll have to look it up and re and I'll tell you about it tomorrow. So basically. In addition to having tons of work-related goals for this year, my other goal is to um, focus more on self-care as well. Where do you get magnesium? Um, it's a, supp a vitamin supplement. I bought mine on Amazon. I can um, pop the link in my Amazon shop later today so you can see it. Um, it's supposed to be really good for joint and for joint pain and I find that it helps my back sometimes and so I had forgotten to take it for a while quite a while and so I started taking it again yesterday thinking it'll help my foot and I do feel better if you're new to yoga please just start with beginner stuff there's so much information out there but yoga is amazing and it's good for anybody yes I plan on continuing with my yoga Edna I'm also boxing too so, you know, you got to do some extremes. So I do yoga at night and I, I do some boxing in my garage during the day. And yes, I play Rocky music while I box because <laughs> I'm that kind of a silly person. 
Does anybody have any other questions? That was a lot of stuff. I know it wasn't all on, um, it wasn't all on subject, but like I said in the beginning of the podcast, we focus here on being a creative podcast, but there is that thing called life that folk, that surrounds being creative. And so we really do end up discussing, end up discussing the creative lifestyle with a focus on creativity. When is my new website coming? I'm going to find out. I'm going to try to find a timeline later today or later this week, Angela. I am uh, anxious for that to come soon as well. Yeah, I'll share the links tomorrow for the two beginner yoga routines that I've enjoyed. All right, I don't see any other questions. And Angela, we will get back to your question about the website later this week. I will have an answer hopefully later this week. I know we're all excited and anxious about that. But thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed chatting with me and everyone else. I hope you enjoyed all the things that we talked about today and all the things that I showed. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy Monday. And I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Bye-bye.